My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 85 of the 120 Days to Jam Mathematics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be officially saying bye bye to geometry and trigonometry. One, I noticed that the more we solve questions, the more the question begins to look familiar and familiar. And I've also realized that from what you've learned so far, if you go over them many times, you should be able to solve as many questions as possible. Then for some questions, I felt they are not necessary. But the good news is that you will see all the questions John ever said, both the ones we created and so many more on the Flash Learner Jam application. And all these questions, they work offline. What do you do? After this class, go to the Flash Learner Jam application, go to Mathematics, and you have option to choose topic. Choose here as random. The under topic, click on all the boxes that says geometry, trigonometry, and all these topics. With that, only questions under these areas will be displayed. Play with questions. The good news for you is that if you have any problem with any question, so long it is from the Flash Learners app, not any other app or any other source, just screenshot and send to me. I will prioritize it. Immediately I see it, I will explain it to you. I give that priority. And all the assignments are always get the Flash Learners app, play with questions. It is not too much to ask for. The app is on Google Play Store or you visit flashlearners.com for various versions or you reach me directly also for the app it's just a number or whatsapp you have whatsapp account then i always told you that i am open for mentorship many of these young persons you need mentor somebody to train you to guide you so if you feel i'm qualified to be one of them you can let me know at least i start coaching you there are a lot of persons already looking up to me in the previous challenge one of my students got a very high score in Jam. Even in mock exam jam, I get people who score more than 300 every year. I am not a fan of sharing screenshots or bragging, but that is basically it. This question says, find the area of the trapezium above. Area of trapezium A is 1 over 2 times sum of parallel side. times height. This is the area of trapezium. A is equals 1 over 2. The parallel sides are simply the one above and the one below. So in this diagram, 7 and 3 are the parallel sides. And so means add the parallel sides. That should give you 7 plus 13 times height. The height is 6 centimeters times 6. That is basically how to find the area of trapezium. In some cases, you'll be given the area, you'll be given the height, and you'll be asked to look for some of the parallel side. It should be something easy for you. Some cases, you'll be given the parallel sides, the area, and you'll not be given the height. So, anyone you are not given, make it subject formula. If you are not given parallel side, you simply say, A, is equals half, you can call the parallel side P times H. 2 times area over H is equals your parallel side. So any answer you get, that will be the sum of the parallel sides. So don't have a fixed mind that question will always come in one particular way. We are adults and we should be more than that. This should be A equals 1 over 2. 7 plus 13, is that 20? Yeah, 20 times 6. This should be, area is, whether you choose to divide or multiply first, in this case, you are going to get the same answer. 
20 over 2 is 10 times 6, 6 to. Or 6 times 20, that should be 120 divided by 2, 60. So, area is 60 centimeter square. That is the answer. Let's take a look at the next question. The area of a square is 44 square centimeter. Find the length of the diagonal. Is it too much to ask? No. This is square. Square, all the sides are the same. Area of the square is length squared. Once you square the length, you get the area. Which means length of the square is the square root of area. Now, the square root of area is square root of 144. And that will give you 12. Each of the length is 12. 12. We are asked to look for the length of the diagonal. The length of the diagonal is from here to here. If you look at it like this, here is a right angled triangle. This is 90 degrees. The length of the diagonal is S or the hypotenuse, or you can call it A. Since it is a right angled triangle, Pythagoras theorem we work here, which says that hypotenuse square is opposite square plus adjacent square. They are the same length. Length square is 144 plus 144. Length square is 288. Length is square root of 288. That should give you 12 root 2. 12 root if you don't understand how I got 12 root 2, it means you still have problems with swords. Please go back to that class. Don't skip any episode. If anyone you don't understand, ask questions in the comment box. Contact me. Don't skip anything. Don't do anything or you are shy to ask questions or to talk. You shy, you fail. You write again, you shy again, you fail. Nothing to be shy about. Being a jambite is not a thing of shame. You are not the first, you are not the second, you are not the third, and you are not the last. Okay, let's play with more questions. A solid hemisphere has a radius of 7 cm. Radius is 7 cm. Find the total surface area of the hemisphere. The total surface area of a hemisphere is the curved surface area and the plane surface area. And that is 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared. This is the formula for calculating the total surface area of a hemisphere. In this case, the total surface area is, is 3 pi r squared. And this is 3 times 22 over 7 times 7 squared. That is it. And if solved correctly, this should give you 462 centimeter squared. That is the curved no, so total surface area. If this is total surface area, and this is curved surface area, and this is plane surface area, it means if you are given total surface area and the plane surface area, you'll be able to find the curved surface area. Let's see what the next question has to offer. Okay. This time around, we are dealing with cone. Cone is something you should understand very, very well when it comes to jump and when it comes to measuration. This is cone for you. Like this. It's like half of a circle and something. Let's say something like this. So here is usually the radius of the circle. If I give you something like this, you agree with me that this is your hypotenuse, right? This is your adjacent. Because here is from a radius. This is radius. This already gives us radius and opposite. This is your right angle, 90 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have... Okay, this is also your angle, theta. You see that if you understand your right angle triangle, Every question under code will be solved for you. But this is the issue. 
in code, they so package the name that you will not even know what you know. Like instead of saying find the hypotenuse or find this, they will tell you that here is slant height. They will say it is slant height L. Instead of saying find the adjacent, they will say find the base radius. Here is obviously the base radius. Here is the height. Arrow is the height. So base radius, you can call it B or whatever. I don't know. Height is equals H or arrow or let's call here H or opposite. Just make sure you understand what you are doing with. The question is, find the curved surface area of the cone. Curved surface area of a cone is pi arrow L. That is the formula anywhere you go, pi arrow L. Here, do we have the radius? We are given diameter. Is equals 10 centimeter. So radius is diameter over 2, and that is 5 centimeter. So we have radius, and we know we are solving in terms of pi, so no need to use pi as 22 over 7. What else? Here is the slant height, which is the slant height. I told you the hypotenuse. From this question, they said that the base diameter is 10. From here to here is 10. But we don't need base diameter to solve, we need base radius. So the base radius is from here to here, that is 5. And the height is 12. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have 5 here and you have 12 here, can you tell me that you cannot apply h square is equals o square plus a square here? Of course, from Pythagoras theory, you'll be able to get your hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is 13, and it is the same thing as your slant height. From here, I think food is ready. Curve surface area becomes pi times 5 times 13. 5 times 13, is that 65? Mm, 65 pi uh, cm squared. This is your correct answer. What if we are asked to look for the base angle? If you have here and here, base angle is simply theta. And we found out here to be 13. Tan theta will be anything. The three ratios and the Pythagoras theorem do help you find anything under here. So I'm not teaching you or solving a particular question like you are used to. No. I'm teaching you everything you should know under a topic for you to keep an open mind. Half knowledge is very, very dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, with these few points of mine, I hope you will agree with me that at least we've done much under geometry and trigonometry. Jam has five parts. Number and numeration, we've done that. Algebra, we've done that. Geometry, we've done that. Trigonometry, we've done that. So what is remaining for us is calculus statistics and probability the good news is that the next episode is definitely going to be calculus and i love that so tell your friends everyone about the flash learners youtube channel and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for amazing 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 and amazing videos then get your app and begin to play with further questions under geometry and trigonometry see ya take care